friends welcome back to my channel and welcome to the video I promised you about two weeks ago called my boxycharm hidden gems now keep in mind I have been with boxycharm for years this is a long-term committed relationship between boxycharm and I only like last year did I even start getting their PR I have been a constant customer of boxycharm since was it 2016 or 2017? I think I started getting it before I even started my channel. And when I started getting BoxyCharm, that was really a huge introduction to me to indie brands, brands that weren't just at the drugstore. Because I was such a babe on a budget that I didn't even really go into Ulta's, I didn't go into Sephora's, I was very much a drugstore junkie because that is where some quality makeup had always just delivered for me. So when I learned about BoxyCharm, Charm, I was like, you know what? I'm so excited. Let's just try something for yourself. And it was like $21 a month at the time, five full size items, but it was always brands I had never, ever heard of. It was always exciting for me to get a new piece of makeup to discover. I've really learned like creams aren't so much my jam as much as powders. But then I started being introduced to brands that I had never heard of. Half of them you guys know I can't even pronounce a lot of times. But I enjoy them so much. So I'm going to be talking about some individual pieces today from brands that I have discovered through BoxyCharm. Now I know everyone's story is different. So your makeup journey may have led you to learn about some of these brands before BoxyCharm. Maybe through YouTube, through all the things. But this goes back for me like four plus years. So I'm so excited to kind of jump into these today with you. I feel like I have so much of this on my face and so much stuff I couldn't even put on my face because there's a lot of hidden gems that I've personally discovered through BoxyCharm. Something else I like about these videos is you don't have to get BoxyCharm to enjoy these types of products. Some of these brands are things that I have just learned I love and I've started reaching for them or buying them outside of the boxy charm world. So that's also why I like to do these videos because even if you are not a boxy babe or you were a boxy babe and you needed to stop getting boxy charm, you can still learn about some amazing brands that are out there through subscription boxes like this. So let's jump into this and please feel free to share below some things that you've discovered. If I mention something that you're like, oh my gosh, yes girl, I forgot about that or oh my god, I learned about them and now I love this piece from them too. Give us all the tips below because we like to discover hidden gems together. Oh, I feel like some of this stuff is going to be so nostalgic for me. It's definitely going to be taking me back through the years. Um, and some stuff, if you have been around for a while, you will have heard me talk about a lot. So I think today I want to start. Let's take it back a few years to when we got a universal brow pencil that Honestly, I at the time had no idea the impact that this pencil would have on my life. Yeah, I just said it like that, which sounds dramatic because it kind of is and I have a fun story behind it. This is my Winky Lux eyebrow pencil. This is the second one that I actually did purchase on my own. The packaging has changed, I need to say. So if you have bought a Universal Winky Lux brow pencil in the past, I don't know, two years probably, um, the packaging is different now. This looks just like the original that I got back in the day and I used it all up and had to buy another one. Um, I don't even know what makes this so special for me other than the fact the formula is really, really good. Even though the tip is kind of more that larger triangular shape that for some people can be difficult to work with. But for my brows, I've always had great luck with this Winky Lux pencil. You can make small strokes, lighter strokes, you can build it up, and then it's got a spoolie on the back that you can kind of brush through to really lighten it up even more to make it more universal for my blondes in the audience or lighter haired friends. I've actually had blondes and brunettes and people with even like jet black hair tell me that they have really enjoyed this pencil because they can build it to achieve that full look and it lasts all day. A lot of you guys know I am going through hormone replacement therapy because I did have a hysterectomy last year at 35 years old. But a story I haven't told is about three plus years ago, I guess now, um, I did have an ablation to try to help what was ever going on internally with me. That's a totally different story. But the weird, funny story I have about this eyebrow pencil and a surgery of all things, or procedure as they like to call it, was that I was actually being wheeled back for my procedure when 
two separate nurses stopped my bed from rolling to ask what I had on my brows because I had on a very, very, very light makeup. It was just for me to feel like a little bit more confident because I enjoy doing my makeup in the mornings no matter what's going on. So I just had a very, very light makeup and I had this in my brows and two different nurses stopped me to say, what is in your brows? Um, I need that. And they were both blondes and I was, you know, kind of like a light brunette at the time. And as I was literally having the medication work into my system, I was trying to say the words Winky Lux Universal Brow Pencil, which was not the easiest thing to say as I was already drugged up for my procedure. But that has always stuck with me too, that even as I'm being rolled back for a surgery, procedure, whatever, uh, this this is what people were asking me about with my brows <laughs> and I've always enjoyed it this morning I used it to really start that arch and I, I, we always joke that there's that one brow that looks like it does yoga and Pilates and the other one sits on the couch like I feel like this at least helps me to make them look a little bit more like sisters not twins but sisters I love this pencil I think that it has a great formula and when this one goes away I'll probably buy my third because this is my second one I do really love it and I was introduced to Winky Lux as a brand overall through BoxyCharm and this one particular piece has definitely lasted the test of time in my beauty space where I've repurchased it and I just really really like it and you guys know we get a ton 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 of brow products and I am not afraid to tell you things that I don't like but I do have two others in front of me that also have stood the test of time. One of the other older products that is in my collection still is this Brow Gal Convertible Brow O2 Trio. This is for brunettes, and as you can probably guess, I definitely now gravitate to this darker one. But a lot of you know when we received this a couple years ago, I was venturing between these two shades because I had lighter hair then. This powder is really nice because it doesn't have a lot of fallout. There's another brow product I'm going to talk about that has a lot, lot, lot of fallout to the point that I've really gone back to using this a lot more because it is very consistent. I like how this lays on top of a pencil or with nothing underneath it at all if I'm just doing a quick easy brow to go. I really enjoy this. I also like this for travel because it does have a little mirror and I have traveled since I've gotten this and I've taken this with me over other things because it is not a messy product and it is all contained in one and I have some options. I also really like the formula. I think it lasts a really long time. We've gotten quite a few different items from this brand through BoxyCharm over the years and I have really fallen in love with the Brow Gal. They also had a brow, oh gosh, I think we got it like two and a half years ago now and it was um like a brow filler that was more of a wand type. I really liked that one too. That did a great job really filling in the brows, kind of giving a feathered out look. Brows are not my favorite thing to do as so many of you know. So I kind of like trying different options and the Brow Gal has been a brand that I can trust and really enjoy most of their products. So the Brow Gal for me is definitely a hidden gem brand, but this particular powder trio has also been an item that I have loved for years. So this next product is one I do really like and I discovered it through BoxyCharm. You may have heard of this brand before because I think it's a little bit more of a bougier brand, but this is the Brow Bar by Rima. I have really liked this, especially since I've gone darker with my hair in the past year because I have been able to build up the brow a lot more defined than I could even with this little brow gal piece because the thing is about filming YouTube videos, sometimes you have to pile on a little bit more makeup than you would in real life to be able to kind of combat the lighting, the editing, all of the stuff that we do here on YouTube. These pieces have come in very handy for me. As you can tell, I have definitely hit pan on this dark brown. I also really reach into this black shade a lot for some just color dimension to really like darken the brows up because sometimes, and I've even heard it in my comments from you guys just being helpful growl pals with makeup lovers, with this and this, sometimes your brows when you're a brunette can come across more gray toned and we all know we're not trying to go fully gray just yet. In fact, I'm combating that every chance I get, especially in the roots. This one also has one of those, uh, Oh, see how you can actually see how messy this product is though by looking at this piece because as you could see I was trying to explain to you this is a wand that can fill in your brows with some dark pigment and some brush it through but it is so messy as you can tell 
I only reach for this when I'm not traveling or when I'm just trying to take a very light hand because it is so darn messy. I get the crumbles of my brows everywhere when I use this. I've cleaned it up several times, but it always gets messy again. So that's something you kind of have to, look at this, this is on my fingers, and I've cleaned this thing not that long ago. So it's just a very loose powder. So the formula isn't necessarily my favorite. I think what I like most about this is the color tone I'm able to get. But I have really been able to trust this with my brows and it does last a long time. So I, I really do think this is a hidden gem for me. It's just kind of messy. And you know, there's pros and cons to all makeup, but I still really like this. And again, hit pan on it. That tells you a lot. So this next brand I almost didn't put in here because I know a lot of you guys have learned about this product through various other things, not just BoxyCharm. But for me, as Nicole, sitting down doing this video for you today, the only way I learned about this product was through BoxyCharm. So I got to give credit where credit is due. I know a lot of you may have learned about this from somewhere else, probably here on YouTube or Instagram, but the Laura Geller Baked blushes are something that I discovered through BoxyCharm and I love this blush so much. And if you've been with my channel a while, a lot of you guys know I was anti-blush for a significant amount of time <laughs> and I started getting BoxyCharm and doing my videos the way that I enjoy doing them, which are really deep dives. So I learned a lot about makeup through this whole process with BoxyCharm and doing the reviews the way I do them. And this blush is apparently a fan favorite across the makeup world. So that's the one reason I was kind of like, maybe I shouldn't talk about this one because a lot of you guys probably knew about it before BoxyCharm, but it was my introduction. So that's why we're here talking about it now. This blush, again, as a non-blush lover, converted me to go, wow, this is really nice. And you can build it up. It has a beautiful luminosity that just looks like healthy, glowy skin. It doesn't look like too much is happening all at once, which is really nice, especially if you are a highlight lover like I am and you're using a luminous -y blush. The one I have here is called Tropic Hues. I think this is one they did specifically with BoxyCharm maybe? I can't remember because it says not for sale and it says a sample on the back because I think this was from like a, maybe a, something with Boxy. I'm not positive. But I love this blush. I wear this one a lot. And you guys have heard me talk about it a ton through the years. And again, as a non-blush girl, that tells you something, right? A little bit. I really like this blush and I had to talk about it in my hidden gems because it's where I learned about it. Okay, friends, I'm going to be 100% with you right now. I am still kind of pulling through some of the stuff that I love so much. And I just realized when I was putting on some of this makeup today because I thought maybe I'll try to put on as much of this makeup as I can. I knew I had some repeats of types of makeup, but I thought I'll try this. And then I realized I had like a zillion trillion highlighters and I thought I'm going to look like a glazed donut. Okay, let's just commit. So as you can see, I have a lot glowing on. So let's talk about the glow I'm loving that I think are hidden gems from BoxyCharm that I can't stop using and I have not decluttered through the many years I have been with BoxyCharm. Many, many. Let's talk about it. And this is not about going to be any Becca. This isn't going to be about any Ofra. Although I did discover Ofra for the record through BoxyCharm. But that is not in here. And that tells you a lot about what I'm about to say because... You guys know Ro a Rodeo Drive from Ofra was like my gateway highlighter that I've talked about for years. I did get that through BoxyCharm. I guess technically that could have fit in here because that's how I learned about Ofra, but no. There are four more highlighters in here that are not that high-end brand that everybody knows about now that I still think are really, really good. So let's get into it while I continue to glow in your face right now, okay? Every single fall into winter video that I pull out my favorite highlighters for that back half fourth quarter of the year is something that I have had since the beginning stages of my YouTube channel and my love with BoxyCharm. And this is my vintage highlighter from Jessica Labiskind. How many of you even know what I have here in my hand? Like the video if you still remember this product that either I've talked about or maybe you received it too. We even received a single luminous pinky kind of blush highlight that I already hit pan on and used up over two years ago. This is another one that I received very, very early on. This is the Illuminating Face Highlighter Set in Rose Quartz and Chocolate Diamond. And as you can tell, pan hit on this as I was applying it this morning. Oh my goodness, so much to unpack here with this goodness. 
I have let you guys know for years, I love this highlighter. I feel like this is that extra frosting that I love to get in that fourth quarter time because this is a cooler toned highlighter and a lot of you guys know I've always been a warm toned lover so really adjusting to cooler tones was a process for me and this particular highlighter the chocolate diamond was my ultimate as you can see by the pan on here but this rose quartz also stunning beautiful I mean they're not as creamy feeling as they once were but keep in mind these are probably four years old and with powders, you can kind of take the, oof, I'm distracted by the shine. I'm sorry. They're so pretty. I hope you can see this. The hard part a lot of times about highlighters is in editing and lights. Sometimes you can't really see it the way I see it. Every year I would reach for this one because I knew that this gave me this gorgeous icing right here on top of that cheekbone that just gives you that extra bling. Today, I have that on all over my face because I'm a glazed donut along with some other stuff I'm going to talk about. And I just think this is so beautiful. They aren't as wet feeling maybe as they once were when I got them, but powder highlighters, as we know, you know, it's kind of like powder. You kind of just feel it out as far as expiration goes. But so far, these are still performing beautifully. I love them so much. And I reach for them every single year. It's not even like I've ever missed a year of talking about them because I like them that much. Now, what I can tell you about how I think this lays on the skin is it rom oh, blah, blah, blah. It very much reminds me of the Becca formula when it's on the skin and applying because it doesn't try to grab the texture. It just kind of lays beautifully and it gives the same, I feel, shimmery properties is the Becca one. I'm not sure I can articulate it in a way that makes sense, but this is my champagne pop that a lot of you know I love. Hello Pan. But I'm just going to do a little swatch of Ruski here. This is clearly a different tone and a different color, but I think you can tell what I mean. This is the Becca. These here are the Jessica Labiskin Vintage Duo. It is similar in formula, I think because I think it looks very good on the skin. It looks very similar. It's got that wet look to it, but it gives you that glow that really just makes your skin look so healthy and beautiful. Like I just can't stop staring at this hand now. Obsessed, shiny object syndrome right here. I feel like I have loved this since like, is it 2016, 2017? Hitting pan on it, loving it. I can't, I can't stop talking about it. I'm repeating myself, so I'll move on, but oh my gosh. Something else that I have on the body because I couldn't stop the glow today. It just wasn't gonna happen. And sometimes you gotta let your inner glow out, you know? Um, on my collarbones and on my shoulders today, I have something that I thought I was gonna hate. Really thought I was gonna hate it. How many of you got or still have the Steve Laurent Jelly Highlighter? So here's the thing about the Steve Laurent line. I also have something else in my collection that I'm gonna be talking about in a second from this brand because this brand was introduced to me through BoxyCharm and I've had some things from Steve Laurent, I'll be honest, that I didn't like. It was a <laughs> fail for me. But this highlighter looks so darn good. I mean, look at this. I'm just glazing the glazed donut on top of itself. It's fine. I need Glow Words Anonymous, I think, but that's, yeah, I don't wanna go. I have worn this on my face. I have worn this on the body, as you can see, and I just think this gives you that gorgeous, wet, juicy look that I love pulling out in the summer times. I love pulling it out even in the beginning stages of fall because I feel like that just adds that little extra touch of pop. But heck, I'll even take some winter drizzle on my shoulders any day of the week too. I live in Florida, it's a thing. The formula on this is really, really nice. It gives you this wet, I and mean, this feels, still feels like a wet jelly in here, and I've had it over a year now. It is so stunning, so beautiful. I think I've even worn this on the lids, and it looked amazing. When I need a little extra punch, like say I know I'm going to come on camera, or maybe I'm going to take a picture for Instagram, even with a blingy highlighter, like that is this very cool tone Jessica Labiskin one that really makes it pop on my skin, if I need just a little something extra, I'll put a little bit of this on my finger, tap it on to like the peak of where my cheekbone that I want to be is there. And it just gives you that little extra oomph. It's just that that little tab extra. And I know not everybody likes to glow like me as much as I do. Highlighter had its moment a couple years ago and now I feel like we're kind of just like transitioning with trends as we do. 
but I still think this is so beautiful and when you're coming on camera or if you're taking pictures or if there's a special event you just really want to glow for sometimes you just you go in I really love this something you may be surprised I'm gonna tell you that is definitely a hidden gem that I have discovered through BoxyCharm is artist couture now I am saying this for the record because this is a quality item. It really is beautiful, but a lot of you know Nicole's messy. And I don't like a loose highlighter, so you haven't heard me talk about these a lot on my channel. But it's not because the product isn't good. It's just because it's not the way I prefer to do makeup, but it is really pretty. I've worn this loose highlighter specifically on my eyes to complement more of a purple toned look because this one is purple dreams that I did receive. I had a more golden one years ago from BoxyCharm and I was always impressed with how it looked. I just knew I was messy. It always went everywhere and I never reached for it unless I was talking about it for a video. But it is a really, really nice formula. I was introduced to them through BoxyCharm. I totally get it. If you've learned about them, not from BoxyCharm and maybe from YouTube or something else, but this is how they were introduced to me. And I know that they're quality. They've got some amazing highlighters and they're definitely worth mentioning as far as a hidden gem goes. Even if it's not the type of makeup I love, I know there's a lot of you out there that are also obsessed with that kind of glow. Okay, one more highlighter palette that I have to talk about because this has lasted for me. How many declutters has this beaten? And I keep thinking I'm gonna declutter it because it's kind of bulky. I live in a tiny house. I only reach for this sometimes if I want a glow that is going to be pigmented like crazy and colorful. And every time I use it, I remind myself how dang good it is. So it still lives here and I've even used it recently as of last week. This is my Naked Cosmetics Highlighter Palette. Now, this does not look very bougie. This doesn't even look like something that BoxyCharm would even want to give out now because this kind of, well, I mean, it kind of depends. I feel like we're getting less and less of things like this from BoxyCharm, but I remembered getting this and being so excited for it because I love a good highlighter, but this highlighter, I can't even begin to tell you Pow! I mean, look at that. Super pigmented, and it can accent any eye look that if you're doing a colorful look, that is genuinely why I have kept these, because they are so powerful, and they are amazing for bold eye looks. They're also great to complement eye looks. Like, these are just two of the shades here. I've talked about these a lot on my channel. Through the years, I'll do a blue and a purple, and that's the thing. It's like, there was a moment where blues and purples and greens and stuff like that were making a moment in highlighters probably two years ago when we got this, but it just wasn't something that I was like, oh man, I'm not going to wear blue on my face every day. I'm not going to wear green or pink on my face every day. But then as I discovered like through the test of time, how these last and how they give you a beautiful, vibrant color. I've been like, I can't find anything else like it. And I think that's why I keep coming back to this and hanging on to it because I have never had anything like this. And I've bought palettes similar to this that were these colors and these tones, but none of them have had this same formula where it can really accent a look. I almost feel like I need to pop it on for you to show you what I'm talking about because I don't have this on today. So I've got some gold on my lids that I'm going to talk about in a minute, but I'm going to go into this yellow color here just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about this up here making this gold shit like can you see this like that that just went that just went there and maybe I'm messing up my eye look whatever in the name of discussing makeup I need to do it this is not even what's on my lid right now but I feel like it could be I'm just gonna do some work here I have to blend a little bit but you're kind of getting the idea of what I'm talking about here at least I hope you are seeing what I'm seeing here in person which is this is so vibrant and bold and it just makes such a statement so much so that I have to blend it down to make it match the rest of the eye look when most highlighters are a bit more subtle. These are bold. I've never experienced anything like them. You have a variety of colors in here for any eye look. So that is why I keep this. And Naked Cosmetics also had an eye trio that I literally just decluttered 
a month or two ago and it was only because they had kind of aged out and they were getting kind of crumbly and I can tell with the texture of these these are getting older too but the formula is still performing it was that triple colored trio that was still really good and the metallics in there were beyond they were ahead of their time it was before we had those type of metallics really in the market I'm, I get impressed with Naked Cosmetics I haven't loved everything from Naked Cosmetics I'm pretty sure I got some lippies I didn't love from them but the products that I still have in my collection Mm, mm, so good. I feel like this video is going to be way too long of me talking about stuff that I've told you I've had for years and I love. I just do. Throughout the entire time I was trying on this makeup for you this morning and putting it all on my face, I was using so many Moda Pro brushes between eyebrows and eyes and face things. I discovered Moda Pro brushes through BoxyCharm. I've also discovered Luxie brushes through BoxyCharm, but I feel like those weren't as much of a hidden gem. I feel like Luxie definitely has its mark out there in the beauty community, whereas I had no idea Moto Pro or they also have the Royal and Langnickel. They're like all under the same umbrella of the brand. I think that's how they started was Royal Langnickel or something. Uh, the first brush I ever received, and I'm not going to kid you, I have two of them now because I fell in love with them, was this 430 Crease Brush. A lot of us received this as a single, was it a part of a trio? It was part of a trio back in the day. It had two face brushes with it and this eye brush for creases. And all of us fell in love with this one brush. So I started stalking the brand like crazy. And you guys fell in love with it too. And then through the years, we've gotten even more. Thank goodness, because I used them all this morning. All of them are dirty right now because I used them this morning. Including for brows, I have yet to have a Moda Pro brush that didn't work for me on some level. I love them a lot. A lot, a lot. Hidden gem, absolutely love. And I always forget to tell you guys, if you are curious, I do have a code in my description box for Moda Pro brushes. It's, I mean, use it if you want, use it if you don't, use it if you don't want, but I have... I love these so much that I've tagged them enough that finally Moda Pro was like, I'm just going to send you a code so you can have it because you don't shut up about it. I'm like, it's because I've loved these brushes for years now, years and years. Eyeshadow palettes are always going to be something that speak to my soul on a level that just, it's just eye candy, but it's also so satisfying to get a good eyeshadow palette to throw on your eyes and just know that you didn't even require a lot of work and it was just beautiful. Let's talk about some of those right now because there are some eyeshadow pieces in here that I have had for a very long time and some newer to my collection that I love, love, love. Okay, so for the record, this brand, originally I got this tiny eyeshadow palette that you guys know I enjoy, but I also got a face contour palette from them. And I used that sucker up so much through the years, I hit pan on it. It was technically my first contour palette that had a little highlighting in it and a little bit of shading into it so you could contour out the cheekbones that God forgot to give me. I love them so much that I, I used it all up. And then I still love this IBY Threes Company Trio Eyeshadow Palette, and this one never comes up well to see how much pan is on it because of all the lights, but these both have a significant amount of pan on them. Love them so much. I started my eye look today, actually, with this brown tone. And I've traveled with this tiny little palette. It has done such a good job of still blending, being super smooth. I have fallen in love with certain things from IBY and we got those from BoxyCharm. I am so grateful because like I said, and a lot of you OG subscribers and I'm thinking of specifically like Belinda, Lisa, so many of you guys know how much that contour palette was my ride or die. I loved it for everything, traveled with it. And now this tiny little palette I have traveled with, I have taken it with me places because it does a beautiful quick eye look that makes it look like you tried really hard and you really didn't have to. Such a good product. Use this today for the highlighting in the brow bone and in the inner corner as far as my eye look went today. And a lot of times I can't find a frosting eye look like this. This sucker is such a beautiful highlight. And I don't know if it just goes well with my skin tone or just goes swell with so many different eyeshadows, but I can use this as an inner corner highlight, a lid highlight, a brow bone highlight. I have pulled this little tiny thing out so many times when I'm working with bigger palettes that maybe don't have what I need. I'm specifically thinking of some of those bigger Tarte palettes that I've been getting from BoxyCharm a lot because I've always really enjoyed, if something gets too crazy on my eyes or too dark, I always know for my eye shape and the way my eyes are, if I lighten up that inner corner and kind of pull it through, I can make anything work. 
a lot of times if I can't find a good light highlighty shade, I'll pull this little bad boy out, jump into this and use my finger, spread it on and go. And it does a beautiful job. I also have always really loved copper shade as well. IBY is definitely a hidden gem for me. I'm not saying I've loved everything I've gotten because I'm sure there's been a few things back in the day when we were getting things all the time from the same types of indie brands that I just kind of was like, eh, this didn't work, eh, this didn't work. But certain things have lasted the test of time. Love them so much. And another eyeshadow palette that I have on my lids specifically today um, is this little baby. How many of you discovered Alamar through BoxyCharm as well? Thumb the video up. Thumbs the video up if you did, you know. And I just recently discovered, or I think they just announced over this past weekend, Alamar is going to be going into Targets. They're starting out, I believe, with a limited selection, including this palette, but it has different packaging. So people can see like what's inside of here. There's more of like a window pane here. And I think their blushes may be there. They don't have everything in Target just yet, from what I understand, but Targets are going to be starting to carry Alamar. I'm not sure if it's all of them, honestly, but I know here in Florida or in Orlando, they've already been spotted. So I'm really excited to see what's next for this brand. I love this. I used this dark brown shade today on top of the IBY brown nude tone to really carve out that lower part of my eye look. And a lot of you guys know the El Malcone shade has my heart along with, you know, this La Costa shade is stunning too. These blue shades are beautiful, but this is what is on my lids today with the packing pressing motion with the finger. It is so good. I've also had some blushes from Alamar that are really, really good. I'm not a huge blush girl and I try to keep that part of my makeup selection curated so I don't have those anymore, but the blushes were high quality. I also really love their brushes. Specifically, this crease brush is one of my favorites because it has these longer bristles really help to get into my deep creases in my eye. So I really like this for a crease brush. And I've also enjoyed these as well. I like this one for just adding little details in and this one for under the eye. Alamar is definitely a hidden gem that I have learned about from BoxyCharm. And I like supporting indie brands like that because I feel like I get to know them as almost a friend in the makeup community in a way. I've really enjoyed Gabby, learning about her and her brand. Another eyeshadow palette that I did use this morning and I've recently used some of the side pieces that I've received from them as well is Ace Beauté. So I have not loved everything from Ace Beauté and I'm very transparent about what I like and what I don't like. I use this today, the shade Cinnamon, under the eyes to really help accent the under part of this eye look that I created. This is one of my favorite palettes from Ace Beauté. I feel like this has a lot of fall vibes that I cannot wait to jump into in this upcoming season. Oh, I also jumped into patchouli um, right up here in the top part of my lid before I added in all of the highlight. This is a really nice palette. This is one of their more, um, I say quali higher quality formula palettes. I have their Vintage Dawn palette that I don't like as much, but I really enjoy this palette along with who still has their, are they called the Shimmer Pots? Oh, the Glimmer Shadows. Cotton Candy is this one, and this one is Iced Latte. I have definitely hit pan on these. These are supposed to kind of be like, I think, the ColourPop Super Shock Shadows, but they're different. They're To me, they're very different. The goal of these is to kind of have a little bit more shimmer to them, I think. And there is a lot of glitter to be had right here. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it or not, but there is a lot of glitter flex in these, which can really make an eye look look like you tried. It can kind of give it that extra oomph, which I also really enjoy. I did declutter the shades that weren't really my favorites. I had a really silvery one and a really red one, but the ice latte and the cotton candy shades, as you can see, are definitely some of my favorites. You just kind of like spread them all over the lid from with your finger and it does a beautiful job of making it look like you tried when you really didn't even need to. I like these a lot and I wouldn't have discovered them if it weren't for BoxyCharm and they are significantly pricier than, than ColourPop when people want to compare them because they're in the pot formulas. These are significantly pricier and I can tell you because I love ColourPop so much, I would never have thrown my money at this just kind of seeing it in an ad or something. So getting something like this from BoxyCharm was a really nice way to discover that I do like these and they could be worth the price if they're the right color shade for me. Again, not everything from Ace Beauté is my favorite. I still don't really love the Vintage Dawn palette, but I'm going to play with that some more this fall, but I've discovered them 
through BoxyCharm. So I really enjoyed those pieces. So I talked about my Steve Laurent jelly highlighter earlier, but I need to talk about two other things that I love. I really do love this Steve Laurent lip liner. I believe this one is in the shade Vogue. It's pretty close to my actual lip color. So I've always really liked this and it's not very stiff for being a pencil because a lot of people know I'm not a big fan of pencil liners but this one actually does a pretty good job and it fills in your lips without dragging harshly. I do like these and I've kept this around for a really long time. And this lip gloss shocked me. This is the Steve Laurent lip gloss in the shade Posh. This is kind of like a lipsticky gloss. It goes on a bit thicker and it dries a bit and I really love the color. This for me is one of the colors that I enjoy throughout the entire year. And it does have some sticky properties to it, but it is a really nice lay down. It gives you a lot of coverage. There's so much coverage when I'm using these that I feel like I don't need a lot of product. I can just put down the lip liner, put this on and go. It's a really, really nice formula too. I've had some lipsticks, I think from Steve Laurent that I didn't like, but also I was surprised I liked this one. I think I almost gave this away before even trying it. So that's why I do try to try as much as I try to try as much as I can. That's hard to say because you never know some things from a certain brand you may hate some things you're like, well, okay. Wasn't expecting that. I like this a lot. Um, and another lip liner, again, going back to the highlighters here, I told you how much I love the Jessica Labiskind highlighter duo here. And we have gotten things from the Jessica Labiskind brand besides this, including this lip liner here in the shade Mocha. This is her cashmere lip pencil. And this is the one I reach for probably the most, maybe because the color is a bit closer. Yeah, this one has a little bit more of a mauve color to it. It's super easy to fill in, but specifically this is so creamy for a wooden pencil that I don't mind filling in my whole lips with this and then going on to something else like putting on a really nude lip and then a gloss to really give myself that extra juicy pout look that makes it look like I have much bigger lips than I really do. I like this a lot and I've held on to this through years and years. I don't even remember when we actually got the pencil. I remember getting the highlighter, but I don't remember when I would have gotten this cashmere lip liner, but I've had it for so long and I really, really like it. It is super creamy. The formula is nice. I really need to look more into the vintage line. I feel like I tried to look into it a few years ago, but it's worth rediscovering for me because I think, I think Jessica does a great job. Jessica, if I'm saying your name wrong, I am so sorry. I've been saying it wrong for over four years though. Eh. I'm going to talk about Lartsy. This is a lip gloss that I received from BoxyCharm that I was surprised that I liked. And I'm wearing this today. I've worn this in a lot of my nude lip looks to really add that glossy, juicy look on top of a pencil. Does a great job. And because I'd had something else from them before that I didn't like, I just kind of was going to discount this whole brand. But once I realized this was a gloss and I had already put it on, I was like, well, I'm committed now but I like this a lot. The formula on this is way better than I think they're drying matte liquid lips. Cause that's the one I think I got before that I didn't like the gloss in the shade vibe. Love, 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 love Whew. guys. I feel like I could keep going down the rabbit hole because there's even a few other brands that I haven't talked about, but I do reach for certain products a lot. Tell me if you like this style of video, if you're liking these hidden gems and then I could do maybe a part two, but this one I already feel like covers a lot of different products. I am swatched up for days here. This is really a lot of the stuff that I just hang on to or keep buying from the brand or I get so excited when I learn about this brand that I've discovered through BoxyCharm. For me, these are all hidden gems that I didn't even know that I would love so much because some things I was just like, oh, it's not a color pop. It's a wannabe color pop. It's not going to be as good. It really is good. Guys, thank you so much for going through all of these hidden gems with me. Like I said, I could probably go on forever and ever, but I feel like this is a good amount of the things that I have been loving. So if there are more that you want to see in the future with hidden gems, like this video and let me know below. Also share with us some of the things that you've discovered that are hidden gems, because maybe that's something that I forgot about or that I'm also thinking about doing maybe in a follow-up video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you happen to be new to my loud, weird, crazy unique channel hi new friends I hope you took a quick moment to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on all of these fun loud weird unique videos that I do every single week bye friends